the gap, standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap, one love for all So we all can make it in Standing in the gap, standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap One love for all So we all can make it in Studying to show ourselves approved Rightly find the word of truth Increasing our faith to envision our freedom So we all can glorify our God Standing in the gap Standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap One love for all So we all can make it in Make it in Make it in Make it in Want to hear him say good Good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, enter into the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, enter into the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, enter into the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say, good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, Wanna hear him say, enter into the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say, good and good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say, enter into the joy of the Lord Of the Lord, joy of the Lord the Lord, joy of the Lord Of the Lord, of the Lord. I'm Art Harmon. I want to welcome you to our Christian Education uh, program uh, and a ministry that we call Standing in the Gap, the gap that has been created between God and His people. And we try to educate people on the Word of God, what it takes to narrow that gap, and to let them know that actually they have actually strayed from the Word of God, but letting them know that God is a forgiving God, and He always provides a way for you to get back to Him. So that's what we, we focus on here in Standing in the Gap USA. The um, We have been in a study for quite a while now. It was uh, God's Not Dead in the Case for Christ. And this will be our last broadcast related to that, because we finished that um, that study. But we're going to uh, get into uh, what, what, what overall would be a review as of the uh, of of the study, and we do it in a in a very very we engaging and I think fun way. So um, uh, we're going to proceed that. Then we're going to uh, introduce you to our new study, the one that we're going to be opening up. And before we get into all that, as always, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you, Father. You've brought us through this study, Father. You've given us some amazing insight, Father, and hopefully some answers to questions that, that we have, Father. Encouraged us, Father, and strengthened us to be able to relate to others your word in a way that that is helpful to them, Father, and maybe uh, 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 insightful, insightful to them, Father, so that they, they if they have strayed away and they're they're on the other side of that gap father that now they're closer to you father and hopefully they can draw others to you also i want to thank you for the privilege father of allowing us to to present your word in this way and so father we want to thank you thank you for the hedge of protection you put around us in these perilous times of 
pandemic and uh, inhumanity of man to man, Father. And just, just for allowing us to persevere through these times, Father, we ask that you, you keep that head of protection around us and all those who join into this broadcast either now or those who may join in later, Father, and look at it on social media. media. So we want to thank you, Father, as always. We ask that you open our hearts, open our minds, and fill us with your Holy Spirit of wisdom, power, and courage as we proceed in your name for your sake. Amen. 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 All right, Standing in the Gap USA is not just me sitting up here. It's a collaboration, and it's a collaboration of love. I wouldn't be able to do this without my wife, who is with me every step of the way. And I thank God for that at all times. So I'm going to turn it over to her right now as she gets us, she's the one who gets us prepped and prepared for whatever it is that we're going to do. And so I, I yield the floor. Marble. Good morning, Saints, and good morning, Sister Monica. Sister Monica and I are here in the room. Y'all better come on in the room. Um, the link to the room is in the chat box. And today, because we're not going to have any presentation, we're only going to have the Jeopardy game, come on in the room. Even if you have just one device, click on that link to join the Facebook Live room so that you can come on in and play the Jeopardy game. And I just also wanted to say, this has been such a wonderful study. Um, I'm, uh, I'm glad that we're wrapping it up now with a fun game of Jeopardy. And we'll, we'll be off for a couple of weeks while we get ready for the next study, but I'll keep you all up to date on uh, Facebook and by email and so on. And it's also my uh, intent and I don't want my wife to, to chuck with this, to do a couple uh, podcasts during that time that we're, that we're all you know, related to a lot of things that are going on in the world today. Some standing in the gap moments? Some standing in the gap moments. Oh, I've been missing my standing in the gap moments. <laughs> <laughs> well, and as I said, then we're going to wrap up God's Not Dead. This, this was a study that I was uh, is really near and dear to my heart. And one that was put together a couple of years ago, and um, we've been putting it out here on um, live here, so we have a complete uh, list of the studies, and we're we're, we're hoping it can be a, a fourth study too, when people are looking for answers to certain things, and they can uh, um, research and bring up this uh, these broadcasts, and uh, and therefore. It can be helpful to generations as we go down the road. In the email, I actually sent a link just to the God's Not Dead playlist of all the classes. So there's a number of, a, a large number of classes mm -hmm. that are on YouTube. Um, it's You can find them in Facebook, but you kind of, it's a little more kludgy. But go to the YouTube channel, uh, Standing in the Gap USA, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see all of those. They're all lined up pretty much by date, mm -hmm. and uh, the first one is at the bottom, and the new, most recent one is at the top. So you can start at the bottom and go through this whole class anytime you want to. Right, right. And as you know, in, in, in this class that we're winding up today, we had approached it in two ways. One is that God's not dead, and the other was, the uh, Cage for Christ. And so um, I always like to uh, emphasize that. This will be the last time that I emphasize it this way. But I, I, I kind of got used to this, what I'm about to do now, which is. And I give you a little more than I normally do. On <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully the police aren't going to be knocking on my door. But <laughs> you, and, and what you mean is the copyright police. Copyright police, yeah. 
in this 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 day and day and age, you don't need to run into any police. <laughs> no, you don't want to run into any police. Uh, you don't know what mood they're in and all that kind of thing. But um, God's not dead, and then the case for Christ. And uh, like I said, we uh, watch the movie God's Not Dead. Are there three or four of those, and that that's what inspired me to do this uh, study. And then also the book and movie, The Case for Christ, by Lee Strobel. And so as we as we move on from that, we um, we had gotten into a uh, into uh, a uh, I ain't gonna say routine, but uh, we like to test in some way the uh, what it is that we have presented has has it resonated with people or do they. Um, or do they just uh, uh, skim the surface of, of it? And I always make the uh, analogy to uh, Jonah. Because, you know, a lot of people claim they love being on the ocean and all that kind of thing. And they say, I've experienced the ocean. Well, all you have is surface, the top of the ocean. If you want to experience the ocean, be like Jonah and go down and down. He said... Jonah says, I went down to the roots of the mountains down there. That's way down there. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting ready to say like me, but I only been about 120 feet down. <laughs> but you've experienced it more than those that are on the surface. This is true. It's a whole new world. It it's sure a whole is. different world down there. It certainly is. And so when you get into these studies and all that, if you just uh, surf the surface, you don't really get the understanding of it as much. you got to dig down deep into this uh into the case for Christ and, and into God's not dead. Just just into your relationship with God. Don't let it be superficial. Don't let it be superficial. You know, it's, it's the reason they call it personal. Personal and deep. And so that's uh, hopefully how we deal with this. Now, the, what we do in order to, sh to uh, kind of test uh, your understanding and whether it's just surface knowledge or deep knowledge or whatever, we have um, we we do certain games that we do to make it fun for people, and we we've, we've done Jeopardy, and we've done what was that Wheel of, Wheel Fortune, of Fortune, and all that kind of thing, and uh, it requires um, uh, people to um, commit to letting us know how much they uh, knowledge they have on the study, and uh, and we're gonna try to do it today. I mean, we're gonna go through the uh, Jeopardy and Jeopardy. I mean, same. Almost the same way you see when you're on TV, where where you have the boards and you have the categories and all that, and we um, we we just try to find out what you uh, what you know, and also like Jeopardy, there's a prize, Marvel, right? That's right. It's a twenty five dollar Visa gift card. You can spend it anywhere, just like money. <laughs> And so we call this God's Not Dead Jeopardy. God's Not Dead Jeopardy. What have you retained from all this? I don't try to, uh, you know, this is not like a bar exam, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. But I'm going to tell you, have your outlines nearby. Have your outlines nearby. As, as, as we get into this and... Um, I don't know, Marvel. How are we, how are we proceeding here? Well, I think we need to go ahead and get the uh, board up, and you can explain the rules of the game. I'm going to change from you to the Jeopardy board, and in the room, we've got the Jeopardy board. And so far, it's just uh, Sister Monica and me in the room, but there's some people on the live. So if you're on the live and you're not in the room, you can still put your answers in um, and... Uh, Play the game. All right. So what we're going to have here is um, two boards. Okay. Those are the answers, aren't they? Hold on a second. Okay. Well, you, I'm showing it. Well, don't show it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we're going to start with two boards. One is God's not dead and the other is the case for Christ. And... Um, I need to know how many teams we have, but um, um, so far, uh, it looks like Sister Yolanda is on, and Sister Monica is on, and I'm here. So, 
Yeah, I can't. can't. I can't win, but I can play. You can play. You can play, but you have to give them a chance. I certainly will. Before you uh, uh, wrap it all up and all that. So uh, why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we give it three teams just in case somebody comes in late? And who'll Could, be number one? Well, I have to say Sister Monica, so she was the first one in the room. Number two. Sister Yolanda. And you number three? I'm number three, but I will uh, I will step down if somebody else comes in. Okay. So we're going to deal with three teams. God's not dead. And we'll get started here. Boom. Now, um, we have categories, creation, evolution, Big Bang number two, potpourri, and four soils. Okay, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. Can you make that into full screen so that it's a little easier to see? Um, well, I'm not sure. There's, there, I remember seeing... A, it says F11, but I hadn't been working when I oh. pushed it. So, Let's see what happens. Nope, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Okay, so this is what well, we have. Well, hopefully if you can see it, the, uh, each category starts from 100... To 500, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 for each category. And what's big about it is the uh, the team, the team, the thing. team thing is real big. Do you have to show that? Can you? T can I'm you? I'm not sure how to manipulate that. Okay, because it, um, by putting the teams in there like that, it makes the board smaller. That's the only thing. Well, hopefully they can see the board. You know. It's very difficult to see the board. I'm looking at it, okay. and Sister Monica's saying it's very difficult. So take the teams out. Can you just... I just told you. <laughs> okay, well, say no teams then. <laughs> and we'll we'll keep... You go we'll keep, keep track on your own. Well, I have to figure out. I don't even have... I'll get, I'll get right. my paper and my pen. Because it makes it hard to see. Is there... No teams. There you go. Now you can better? see it. Yes. You know, yes. I just think I just think, you know, older you get, the uh, bigger screen you need. I understand that. No, I mean, yeah. I'm telling you, I was looking and that screen was just too small. Well, maybe it's just me. The older I get, the bigger screen I need. Oh, well, that's you know? true also. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe it's just me. <laughs> that is true also. So we're going to have to we'll keep a score manually yeah, and we'll have right to on. figure out yeah we're gonna have to figure out how to i've, I've got i've got a paper um we'll have to figure out in it the future good. when we use um when we do jeopardy how we can um that's fine yeah because the, right, they so, shouldn't show the that so large okay so i've right, got it so, down here. Uh, now who's gonna pick the category and the um I, I think it would go better if I picked the category. Well, so hold on a minute. Uh, Sister Michelle just got here. Um, and so why don't we make, um, well, we'll make her number three. We'll make her team number three. So Sister Michelle, get your outlines ready. We getting ready to play. All right. Hello, Sister Michelle, Sister Monica, Sister Yolanda. We're going to, I'm going to choose the categories. I don't know. Um, are they well, able to, are we able to find from them what, what. Uh, well, hold on a minute. I think we can hear Sister Monica. Can we hear you? Speak up, Sister Monica. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. So do you want to pick a category? Sure. Let's go with creation for a hundred. All right. Creation for a hundred. Name the three main views of the cause of the origin of the universe. Name the three main, there, there are a lot of views, but the three main views of the cause of the origin of the universe. Remember, it's, it's creation is the category, and the origin of the universe is the main part of the question. So, anybody? Big Bang. Now, some people believe in that. 
Some people believe other things, right? So, yeah. so there were a couple other ways that people look at the beginning or the origin of the universe, and and I'll give you a clue. Even if they believe in the origin of the universe, so we getting anything through the chatter? I'm looking. Okay, sister, sister Michelle says she do the best she can because she doesn't have all the outlines. Well, so just answer. I mean, you know, chime in, and I mean, you know, uh, this is co-op. Competitive, but not so competitive. All right, we're gonna so, we're gonna review. So, the, uh, we're gonna reveal the answer, um, and and we'll see. Um, reveal correct. All right, God said, "Let there be light." That's the theist view. Theists is uh, basically those that believe in God, that God was the source. Of 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 the uh, origin of the universe, and the um, it correlates with what Monica said, which is the Big Bang theory. Okay, uh, and then some atheists view that the universe began on its own, and there was no God involved. And then you got the agnostics who are on the fence, and they say, well, it could be God or it could not be God. But so the three the three views are God created the universe. God wasn't involved, and those atheists don't believe in God, so God didn't do it. And the agnostics just don't know. They just don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's usually the case for them. <laughs> you, Monica got one of them, so I think we give her that uh, that score. Give Monica Would you agree? Let's give her the hundred uh, hundred points. All right, we're gonna continue. And since Monica's the only one we can hear, right? Well, she's the only one we can hear. I just put the uh, link to the chat, the uh, room back on the chat. Um, and again, if you even if you only have one device, because the board is showing up in the room, you can go on over to the room, and then we'll be able to see you and hear. Even if you turn your camera off, we'll still be able to hear you. So come in the room if you can. Well, until we get somebody else, Monica, you can choose. Let's go through creation for 200. All right, creation 200. What is the name of the famous telescope that proved that the universe was not eternal? The name of the telescope. Well, I know the answer, but let's see Are if you somebody. Sure it's in our notes? <laughs> yeah, we it talked is, about this. It one. is in the notes. It is in the, the note. The only one I can think of is the hobble, something like that. That is. All it. right. Anybody else? All right. Let's reveal the correct answer is the Hubble telescope. <laughs> Way to go. That's uh, 200 points. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's continue. Monica, you going down the line? Yep, go down the line. 300, creation. Science says that whatever has a beginning has a blank. <laughs> whatever has a beginning has a blank. End. Okay, anybody else? I thought that one too. That's that's the first thing that came to my mind, but that's not the answer he's looking for. All right, nobody else chimed in. We're gonna reveal the correct answer. Science says that whatever has a beginning has a cause. Ah, okay. A cause, and that mm -hmm. relates to that Hubble telescope and why they now believe that the universe has a beginning because. When they look in the telescope and they see uh, objects that have a red light on it as opposed to uh, blue, that means that object is moving away. Mm -hmm. And it's moving away at a certain speed and proportion, meaning that the universe is expanding. And if you think about it, you say, well, it's been expanding forever, right? Well, no. take it back. <laughs> Contract it. And you'll come to a certain point. And at that certain point, 
is the beginning. The beginning. And if it began at some point in time, science is, one of the rules of science is that if anything has a beginning, it has a cause. So there's a cause for the Big Bang. The beginning. And science, you know, science doesn't want to uh, say, well, it's God. They, they call God, and they call the, uh, the cause just the cause. <laughs> it's the cause. Now, we get, into, we get into things about this cause, but in any event, that is the answer. That's the background. We're going to go to the next one. I believe, Monica, you're going to go to 400? Yes. And we didn't give any points for that one, right? No. no? Okay. 400. <clears throat> what are the attributes of the cause that created the universe? Name at least three. Now, I gave you some information about what science calls this, the cause. We call it something else. What is the attributes of something else? Now, I just gave all the hints away. Well, the, the, the cause that we believe caused the beginning is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I, I think that then what you're saying is what are the attributes of God? Uh, that's what I was yeah. trying to say without saying it. Okay, well, I, I just want to make sure. Name at least three that we can associate with this cause that science calls the cause. Because see, see what happened is if, if, uh, if, if at the time of creation, Big Bang, whatever you want to call it, it said that something caused that to happen, okay? And then if it is, as we believe, to be God, then based upon what is being created, what are some of the attributes? One is, one is, I'll give you a hint, one is that at the time of the Big Bang or the origin, what was, cre what was created? Uh, the universe, um, substance, Right. Yes. And and uh, time. Time. So time started then. So if it prior to time being started, there was something eternal. 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 And and since uh, substance and material was created at that time, prior to that being created, there was no need for any substance. So whatever the cause, it is immaterial meaning it doesn't have doesn't have substance and what do we know that doesn't have substance our next study is going to be on the spirit world spirit. i think you need to tell us the answer <laughs> yeah, that's kind of i'm trying to i'm trying well, to pull why, it out that's why it's 400 <laughs> so the question is what are the attributes of god all right we'll go to the reveal the answer eternal Non-material, purposeful, unimaginably, unimaginably powerful, and that it loves mankind. And so a lot of you can understand the uh, first answer, which is it's eternal. Non-material means spiritual. Purposeful, there's a design to this universe. It's not oh, just yes. willy-nilly. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, anything that can, can can do a big bang and create time and space and all that kind of thing it has to be powerful beyond the point we can even understand. And that sounds like omnipotence. Omnipotent, yes. Purposeful also sounds like omniscient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Loves mankind because we fit perfectly into this creation. And and everything's provided for us and it, it, it's just clear that, that uh, the cause of it must love us because it has taken care of us. All right. I guess we're not going to give anything on that one either, no, right? No, we, we can't give out any points, but it's good to have that. So if someone had said eternal, omnipotent, and omniscient, and omnipresent, would they would they would have had gotten that right? Absolutely. Okay. But see, that one kind of tied into what you understand about God anyway. And right. that's why I was trying to hint to. Mm -hmm. But anyway... Okay. We move down to 500. Is that all right, Mon Monica? Go on. Okay. <laughs> what does the Bible say is sufficient proof that God is real? Go 
God, Bible says you know God is real by what? All you need to look at is what? <laughs> Sister Michelle look said, at "Creation, you look at creation. Look at creation. Created. That's right. All right. <laughs> there you go. I, I got things <laughs> that'll interfere with the uh, game board." But Sister Michelle said, "Clearly, I'm here to take some good notes." <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Sister Michelle. <laughs> all right. Oh, Monica gets 500. Yeah, she got 500. Okay, which which other category? Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's go to four soils for 100. Four soils for 100. And, of course, that deals with the parable of the four soils. In the parable of the four soils, on what soil did the first seeds fall? Now, Sister Michelle, I know you know all of these four soils answers. Let's give her a minute and see if she can type it in. And Sister Yolanda, we're looking for you. Type in your answers. All righty. We we can only allow so much time. We don't oh, I got I here. forgot. Wait a minute. Let's do this. <laughs> walked over and they compacted the soil so much and, and, and if you ever seen it pass through a, uh, a, a wooded area or, or, mm -hmm. or whatever grass doesn't grow on the path you say why is that because the soil's not prepared for it to for the seeds to take root so in this in this parable it fell on the path and just laid there and birds came and ate it all up all right we're gonna go ahead Go down to 200, uh, Monica. Go ahead, wherever you want. <laughs> In the parable of the four soils, on what soil did the second seed fall? So it fell on the path, and then it fell. Okay, I think I know. Oh, here we got our time. <laughs> Therefore, the soil couldn't get, their roots couldn't get too big or deep or whatever, and they withered and they died when the sun came up. All right. Continue. Of course, the way this is going, this is going to be the third soil, right? Yeah. In the parable of four soils, what soil did the third seeds fall on? Among the thorns. All right. All righty. All righty. Amongst the thorns. <laughs> $300, 300, 300 points. 300 points. We, we don't have a bank account with 300. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're going to move down to the fourth one in the parable of four soils. On what soil did the fourth seeds fall? Good ground. Good ground. Good, good soil. Let's see. Good soil. And it created a bounce 30, 60, 100 times big. And that's and that's the soil it needs to land on, which is you. Right. Good so, soil. So we can produce a fruit. That's right. So that's a $400, 400 points. 400 points. Continue down to 500. 
In the parable of the four soils, how does the writer end the story? So this was kind of a trick question to me. So, but what it's saying is that in that scripture, right? In the scripture. In that scripture, after this parable was told, then what did Jesus say? Last thing it said. I've told you the story of the four soil. Now he wants to know, do you understand? I don't hear the count. Oh. All right. We're going to reveal it. Let those who have ears hear. Let those who have ears hear. And, and, and just a comment on that, spiritual ears. Spiritual eyes, spiritual ears. All right. Continue. May I pick? Oh, you want to pick one? No, go ahead. May I pick one? I yeah. want to go right in the middle. Big Bang number two. All right. We talked about Big Bang number one, creation. This is Big Bang Number two, and it deals with the um, let there be light. Light. Okay. All right, one hundred. What does science? What does scientists call life's big bang? We talked about creation, big bang. We're talking about the creation of life. What does science call? Scientists call the life big bang. Evolution. Uh, no, that's not it. That's, that's the opposite, actually. That's the opposite. So you remember when we were in the um, the part of the class where they showed all of a sudden all of these different species and genus all seem to come to life at one time, and they can show it. The archaeologists saw it when they dug down. All of a sudden, all these different life forms came up at a certain age. And started with a C. Yup. Well, I've been talking all of that time when we should have had the. You want to give us? What do scientists call the Big Bang? And and this is pretty important because um, this is one that that uh, even even atheists. And uh, people believe in evolution can't can't explain, and it's called the Cambrian explosion. Cambrian explosion. They get down to a certain as they're digging to certain rock levels. The lower they get, is the older it is, and all that. And they find some um, some uh, fossils in there, and all that. And then they come to this one area where it, there's just an explosion of it. It looks like everything. All life that, that we know of and has been created seems that it was created in that one strata. So that's called the that's called the Cambrian explosion. All right, let's continue. Two hundred. <clears throat> now, I've already explained this. What is the Cambrian explosion? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna skip over that. I just gave you the answer on that. One. And, but to reveal the correct, it says. It's a burst of creativity of life like nothing before or since. I remember that image from your, from the class. It shows all these different life forms that all came to being all within a very short period of time. Maybe not seven days, but a very short period of time. Yeah, very short period of time. In the in the way you look at 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 at, at these rock strata and everything. Right. Right. It was right. kind of empty before, and then it wasn't a big bang of life like that afterwards. All right, continue. Down to 300 says, what Bible verse best explains the Cambrian explosion? What Bible verse best explains the Cambrian explosion? <laughs> It's actually 
actually, if you look in, in your Bible, it's 120, Genesis 120, and you'll see where God at that time says, let the, let the oceans teem with life. And so that best explains the Cambrian explosion because that's exactly what they see in that rock strata. It just, boom! Started teeming, huh? Started <laughs> teeming. All right. Okay. Um, we'll, give her, we'll give her half. She got Genesis. Okay. Um, what, was that 200? Well, it was 300. So she gets 150? Give her 150 for that. Okay. All right. Continue. 400. Big Bang number two, 400. How does a Cambrian explosion destroy the theory of evolution? This was a little difficult. If you know the theory of evolution, it says that over periods of time, things change and that it doesn't happen right away. So, uh, that's a lot of hints. But. Well, this one was really good because, you know, they teach they teach us, I don't know, uh, our generation, we were taught evolution at school. It was like there was a, a amoeba or some kind of single cell being that then it multiplied into more and then it turned into a fish and then it grew out legs and turned into a frog or lizard or something. Then it was able to walk on the land and start breathing air and, you know, somehow or another from, from all of that, one of these days came mankind over uh, millions, of years. millions of millions of years. But the Cambrian explosion says what? I'm going to reveal the correct answer. We didn't do the Cambrian. I'll go with DNA. <laughs> That's coming later. <laughs> Darwin, who started that evolution thing, says uh, as one of the things about evolution is it doesn't jump. It takes, like like Marvel said, time, maybe millions of years for uh, for an animal or a species to change, to evolve. But the Cambrian says, well, that's a bunch of bull. Because look at the Cambrian explosion. It not only jumped, but it exploded. It exploded. Darwin has to respond to that. How do you respond to that, Mr. Darwin? <laughs> Let's go to 500. <laughs> what was Darwin's answer to the Cambrian explosion? <laughs> Is that the DNA? <laughs> no. Not yet, not yet. Just keep saying DNA, eventually we'll get to it. <laughs> We'll eventually get to the DNA and just keep on answering. You want me to play the music? Yeah. explain it because it does it is totally contradictory to your theory that's what you have to say yeah yeah all right let's continue marvel pick or monica pick okay we got two choices go. okay Which all right one? you pick well me let's go to potpourri then and okay. potpourri, potpourri is just it's, it's it's a category where it could be anything okay, okay. we'll start at 100 what was discovered in 1953 that is called the Instructional Manual for Operating Any Human Being? discovered changed a lot of atheist minds because it is so complex 
It, it, it is more complex than any computer program that man can even imagine that a lot of atheists who believe that, that life just came on its own had to admit that there's no way that that could have just happened on its own. All right. Continue. 200. Potpourri. What is the strongest argument that atheists use to argue that God does not exist? Atheists Atheism, atheism is almost a religion, you know, <laughs> in and of itself. But they, they always point to one thing and say, this is proof. God doesn't exist. Anybody? Because of the existence of evil. The existence of evil. They say that a, a, a loving God would not allow evil to exist, would not allow tragedies to happen and all that. So if there was a God and he loved us, that wouldn't happen. And since evil exists and all these tragedies exist, then there must not be a God. Now, that's their argument. 300, potpourri, how do atheists account for the existence of good and evil, which they admit exists, but how do they account for that? They, they're aware that evil exists, and they have to admit that good exists, so how do they account for that? How do scientists account for that? <laughs> Neither their science can account for. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they jump over it. They jump over it. Evil exists. Good exists. And we'll get into that in the next study. The angels and demons. And we'll find, we'll find out that things exist, which a lot of people don't even attend to. All right. Let's uh, go down to the next one. 400 potpourri. <laughs> you 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 heard my theme song, God's Not Dead, He's Surely Alive. Who performs that theme song? I just threw that one in there because I figured if anybody knows the answer to that, they deserve $400, uh, 400 points. God's not dead, He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring if, like a lion. If you ever want to know. I love that song, but I don't recall who wrote it or sang it. Okay. <laughs> Oops, let me go over that again. Uh, I hit the wrong side. Let's reveal. The Newsboys. The Newsboys. And they're in that movie, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're in the movie. Yep, they're in the movie. Yep. The Newsboys. That's a great song, too. Mm -hmm. All right, continue. 500. How does the Bible define faith? All right, here we go. How does the Bible define faith? You're on the right track. All right, well, let's see. Um, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Now, so she said substance and she said things you can't see. So, as so a, I feel like that's the whole, all the points. Hebrews 11.1, 1, if you want to know what that is. So, um, so Sister Monica, you think you get all the points for that one? If you want to give it to me, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good answer. <laughs> All right, continue. We're down to evolution, evolution. All right. All the stuff you were taught in school, right? Mm-hmm. First, qu first uh, question is... For 100 points. Who is the man associated with the theory of evolution? Darwin. 
All right, we didn't even get the music for that. That's a hundred. Reveal correct. Okay. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. Okay. Two hundred. What is the name of Darwin's book that ushered in the theory of evolution? He wrote a book. Changed everything as far as the scientists were concerned. isn't it? Now, now, uh, yes, it's going to be the um, origin of species. Now, keep that in mind. Origin of species. Okay? Because there's another question that we're going to kind of play off of that. And it, origin of species. That was the book. Alright. 300. Evolution. What was the effect of evolution? What it, and I should have said, what is the effect of evolution on our theme that God's not dead. And what that means is that how how if 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 evolution is believed, then how does that affect what us saying say. God's not dead? contradictory I would agree so I would say it, it negate it negates our belief that God's not dead if we I don't know the answer can you please read me? <laughs> can, can, you, can, can you please reveal it <laughs> all right if, if uh, the effect would be that God is not the creator and there's no designer of life. That would be the atheist view. The atheist view that uh, evolution is true, and therefore it just happened, and therefore there was no creator, no design, and all that, which is to me is totally rid ridiculous. But in any event, and 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 the existence of DNA kind of shows you that. Right. All right. Continue. Evolution 400. What is Darwin's explanation for the origin of life? Remember I said, keep in mind, the name of his book was The Origin of Species. This question is, what's his explanation for the origin of life? <laughs> say this was a trick question but I tried to explain it and it's, his book was the origin of species this question is okay then what does he say about the origin of life he ain't got one <laughs> absolutely he has none That's right. he has none so uh. Darwin keep in mind Darwin Darwin is talking about the species of, uh, and remember, he wants he wants you to think that one species evolves into another species. But the the problem with atheists and agnostics and all that is that whatever answer they come up with, you can always ask them, okay, then who created that? <laughs> then who created that? And they have no answer for that. All right, continue. Yeah. The last in evolution and. God's not dead board is 500 and it's is there any scientific support for a species evolving into another species that's what that's what that's I mean that's the only way that a monkey can evolve into a man and it, it reminds me of that statement people say well if monkeys evolved into men why are they still monkeys right <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer is no. And right. and Darwin says, well, we can keep digging because we'll find that missing link. But they can't <laughs> find a missing link. They can't find one. All right. Cool. 
Oh, hold on. I'm trying to get some applause. Good. All right. All right. Now, you know what? We're already up on our um, hour almost. So I don't think we're going to be able to do the other board. Well, ask them do they want to hang around. Well, uh, I, mostly everybody wants go. to go to the uh, uh, the um, Founders, Day. Founders Day service at noon. Okay. So um, maybe what we could do is wanna wrap do, up these boards. You want to do the... Uh, um, so Sister Monica, uh, Sister Monica is the winner. All right. what I but I hope do... that everybody had fun, even if you weren't uh, actively participating. I hope you had fun. I do want to show that video. Okay, we can. Now, <clears throat> I, want to, I want to introduce our next uh, study, which is Angels and Demons. I have a short little video, which should take us up to about noon. Um, Marvel, can you play that? I certainly can. Just as an introduction. For most of human history, people have believed in some kind of spiritual realm that exists alongside the world as we know it. Right, and the biblical authors are no exception. Yeah, for them, the spiritual realm is a different kind of realm than ours. And to highlight that difference, the Bible refers to God's space as the sky or the heavens. Because the sky is really different from the land. It's above and beyond. And up there are shiny bodies that move around. I think of these as flaming gas balls. But when the biblical authors looked up, the stars gave them a way to talk and think about spiritual beings. In the Bible, they're called the sons of God, or the rulers and authorities, or even sometimes the divine council. So that sounds really important. What does the divine council do? Well, they're introduced in Genesis chapter 1, where they're called the host of heaven, that is, the sun, moon, and stars. And there, they're also called signs, meaning that their power and status symbolizes and points to God's power and status. Yeah, so in Genesis 1, God appoints them to rule over the day and night. Exactly. And then later in the Bible, we're told that they were celebrating God's power and creativity when he created the world. Like the cheering section of a game. Yeah, right. There are also stories in the Bible where God invites the divine council to participate in making a decision. Like when they help decide how to bring down the corrupt Israelite King Ahab, or in the book of Job, where they debate God's policy of rewarding people who do good. So they're like God's staff team. But why does God need a team? If he's powerful enough to create the whole universe, he could surely rule it without any help. Well, he doesn't need them. But apparently, the God of the Bible wants to share authority with others. Oh, right. God shares his rule with human partners on earth. And so, in the same way, there's a parallel story of God sharing his authority to rule with spiritual partners. Yes, that is, until it all falls apart in a twin rebellion. So you have humans who want to rule on earth on their own terms. So they start building their own nation using their own definitions of good and evil. Yeah, the famous story of the building of Babylon. But check this out. When biblical authors like Moses or Isaiah looked back at the origins of Babylon, they saw more than just a human rebellion, but also a spiritual rebellion. What was the spiritual rebellion? Well, there were members of the Divine Council who, like the humans, didn't want to represent God's authority anymore. They wanted to be God, and they rebelled. And so these created beings deceived humans into worshiping them instead of the Creator. And so, Babylon becomes the biblical image for the combined human and spiritual rebellion. And so God scatters the people from Babylon into different nations. And in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses says, this is when God also scattered the rebels of the divine council with them. So the nations are handed over to spiritual rulers. Yes, and this is why when the biblical prophets look out at the violent empires of their day, they see two dimensions to all the chaos and injustice. Human rebels who are being corrupted by the worship of spiritual rebels, the idol gods of money, sex, and military power. Yeah, when humans give their allegiance to these powers, it leads to a world like ours. Right, and the best example of this is the story of the Exodus, where we're told that the Egyptian genocide of the Israelites was inspired by Pharaoh and by the gods of Egypt. That's really intense. But it's not the end of the story. When God rescued the Israelites from Egypt and its gods, he invited them to become his covenant partners and learn a different way of ruling the world. 
And they agree to it, but in the end, they don't honor the partnership. They give their allegiance to other gods. And so this leads to their exile in Babylon, where they become slaves once again to a foreign nation and their spiritual rulers, awaiting a new exodus into freedom. And this is where the story of Jesus picks up. He said he was here to rescue the world and take it back from the rebels. Which rebels, the human ones or the spiritual ones? Exactly. For Jesus, it was all connected. When he marched into Jerusalem for Passover, he was announcing the ultimate exodus. He was there to confront and overcome all rebel powers and authorities, and he did it by giving up his life. So this is what the Apostle Paul meant when he said that Jesus disarmed the powers and authorities, triumphing over them by the cross. Yes. Jesus condemned our evil by allowing the rebels to unleash all their hate and evil on him. But then he overcame it with the power of his love and resurrection life. And then Jesus told his followers that all authority in heaven and earth now belongs to him. Now yeah, the ultimate human and divine partner. This is really good news. Yeah, and it's why the apostles started inviting everyone to give their allegiance to the risen Jesus, to discover freedom and a new way to be human. Now, while Jesus gained a decisive victory over the rebel powers, he didn't destroy them. They're still around causing problems. Yes, and in fact, they are the problem. The apostles said that humanity's real enemy is never another human. Rather, it's the spiritual powers that animate our cultural idols that inspire hatred, division, and violence. Ah, so when I see people hurting other people, behind it is the divine counsel gone rogue. How do you deal with this kind of enemy? Well, the Apostle Paul said we can resist by putting on the character traits of Jesus like armor, faithfulness, justice, and peace. And he said that our only weapon is the word of God. That is, the biblical story of good news that Jesus has overcome all rebels with the divine power of his life and love. We're going to usher in our new study in a couple weeks. We're going to take a couple weeks off to develop it and make sure we have everything going. But it's angels and demons and it's the spirit world. You can't believe in God if you don't believe in the spirit world. A lot of people say, I don't believe in the spirit world. Well, then you can't believe in God. Why? Because God is spirit. And to worship him, you have to worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're going to get into all that. But it's going to take a couple weeks for us to get all that on board. Do some podcasts uh, in the next couple weeks, and then we'll be back two weeks from today with the new study. God's not, I'm not God's not <laughs> Angels we, and demons. Do we have any music for the angels and demons? <clears throat> we might need to get some music. Not yet. All right, that'll but be we, something you can develop. That's that's why we need two weeks <laughs> to get it together. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now. We're going to let you guys go, but as, as as always, we close with a prayer. Our Father and our God, thank you for this study that you gave us, Father. And hopefully, Father, it resonates and people open their hearts and minds and, and they devour it, Father, and it becomes a part of them, Father. We just thank you for all you've done, all you will do, the upcoming study. We pray for that, Father. We're going to pray for our, for the Founders Day that people are going, going to participate in the founding of the uh, AME Church. So we ask all this in your name and for your sake. Amen. Amen. We'll see you later, Sister Monica. Thank you and congratulations. Gap, standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap One love for all So we all can make it in Standing in the gap Standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap one love for all, so we all can make it in. Studying to show ourselves approved. Rightly find the word of truth. Increasing our faith to envision our freedom, so we all can glorify.
fire her gun Standing in the gap, standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap, one love for all So we all can make it in, make it in Wanna hear him say good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say enter to the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say enter to the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say enter to the joy of the Lord Wanna hear him say good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say in a deep to joy of love Wanna hear him say good, good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say in a to the joy of love Wanna hear him say good and good and faithful servant Wanna hear him say in a to the joy of love of Lord, joy of Lord, Lord, joy of Lord, of Lord.